Here's our tension testing machine. We're going to test this tension specimen in tension by pulling on it with force P and find out what it takes to break that specimen. This is a great testing machine because we can immediately remove those blocks that are holding it in place and put in a different test specimen to make sure that the same P breaks each of these specimens. So the question is what theta can we use so that that test specimen doesn't pull out no matter what P we use in it. It doesn't seem necessarily at first glance that you can find a single value for theta, but let's look at what we've got. Start with the tension specimen itself. As we pull on it with force P, we're going to have a resistance from the friction as it touches the two wedge blocks. So I'll have FB going up in both cases. I'm also going to have a normal force on either side. I know that these are the same because everything in this problem is symmetric. So I can sum the forces in X and I get NB equals NB, which is reassuring if not helpful. And on the other side I will get 2 times FB equals P, or more to the point, FB equals P over 2. Now I want to know when motion impends. Specifically I want to know how to make theta big enough so that motion doesn't impend. We can remember that we're looking for a theta that's at least big enough. If theta were really, really little, you can think that it would be very easy to pull that specimen out. So there's going to be some spot in here where theta is sufficient so that motion doesn't impend. If we know where in motion impends, then we can make theta a little bit bigger than that and we'll be all right. So if we take what we know from equilibrium and we know that FB has to be 0.6 times NB, that's mu from the problem, because motion is impending, then we know that NB has to be equal to P over 2 divided by 0.6 or P over 1.2 which is insufficient to help us know what we're actually solving for. So let's go and look at the wedge itself. The wedge will have equal and opposite forces, NB and FB. And FB is up on the middle part, so it has to be down over here. NB is to the right on the, the test specimen, so it's on the left on the wedge. And I will have friction forces and normal forces. The normal force is going to be normal to the surface. The friction force is opposing motion. So FB tends to move this wedge down. So FA has to be pushing up. Write your equations of equilibrium. NA cosine theta minus FA sine theta minus NB equals zero. And FA cosine theta plus NA sine theta minus FB equals zero. I don't know, frankly, whether this is going to slip or not. So I can consider two different cases. I can consider if it slips at A, then FA is equal to 0.1 times NA, or if it doesn't, then FA is going to be somewhat less than 0.1 times NA. If you're not sure which is it, which it is going to be, you have to consider both cases. So simplifying the equations of equilibrium just a bit, we can go on to consider these. All I'm doing is substituting in what we found out from the test specimen into our equations of equilibrium here. Now, let's consider case number one, if it slips at A. And I'm going to plug in FA equals 0.1 times NA. Now I only have the one equation well, the two equations in the two unknowns, and I can go ahead and solve. I don't know P, but really what I want to know is what theta should be so that P is unimportant. So let's look at that first equation. I want to pull out NA, which is in both of my terms. And actually what I want to do is I want to divide both sides by NA and multiply both sides by 1.2 so that I have something that only involves theta. Let's do the same thing to the second equation. As I pull out NA and divide both sides by NA and multiply by the 2 that was in the denominator on the other side, now I have two equations that are both equal to P, P or NA. I can substitute one into the other. I get cosine theta equals 2.12 times sine theta after you multiply it all out. That gives you tan theta is 1 over 2.12. Theta is 25.253 degrees. That's at least an answer. But you have to find out justify that it has to slip at A. You have not justified that yet. So what happens if we go back here and solve for NA and FA? I want to do that by restating my problem just because it's easier than solving some of these equations and because it's a useful thing for you to think about. If I look at NA and FA as they act on my wedge, let's restate our axis system so that I'm working with that X and Y. 
Now FB, which is down, and NB, which is over, can be restated in terms of that angle theta and that angle theta, so that without ever having to work any hard trig problems, I can say NA equals NB cosine theta plus FB sine theta, and FA is FB cosine theta minus NB sine theta. That would be the sum of the forces in the x and y, my new x and y directions. These are not new equations. They are not independent in any way. It's just the same equations I had before solved for NA and FA. Let's look at what I had before in terms of the same NA over P and now FA over P. That's what I want to solve for. That's P over 1.2 cosine theta plus P over 2 sine theta. Remember, I can substitute those in because I know that it has to slip at B. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to find out when it slips at B. This is the case where it slips at B but not at A. So for those, I get 1 over 1.2 cosine theta and a half sine theta. And on the other one, I have 1 half cosine theta minus 1 over 1.2 sine theta. I want to know whether with theta equals 25.253, I have the condition that FA is less than 0.1 times NA. If that's true, then case 2 is true. What I want to do is I want to plot FA over P and 0.1 times NA over P. If my FA over P line is less than my 0.1 times NA over P line, then I can use a smaller theta than 25.253 degrees. But when you plug this in, FA starts up here at 0.5 and decreases crosses at 40 and ends at negative 1 over 1.2. If I plot 0.1 times NA over P, it starts at 1 12th and decreases down until you get to 1 20th at 90 degrees. It, of course, crosses at 25.3 because that, that case number one that we just figured out over here. But what I can say is for theta between 0 and 25.3, it is not the case that FA is less than 0.1 times NA. In fact, FA has got to be bigger than 0.1 over NA times P, not NA over P, because this is the FA over P line, and this is the 0.1 NA over P line. And clearly, FA over P is bigger than 0.1 times NA over P, which is impossible because that means it slips. So we can say it must slip at A2, and the answer to my question is theta must be at least 25.3 degrees.